in the last video, we talked about the mechanism of muscle contraction, skeletal muscle contraction. And the purposes of that was to uh, create a primer uh, for when we discuss the neuromuscular blocking agents and where they act. So that's what we'll get into at the start in this video. So we'll discuss neuromuscular, blo neuromuscular blockers. Neuromuscular blockers. So if you remember the mechanism of how a contraction occurs, let's start off by quickly reviewing and drawing out our motor end plate. So here we have a terminal axon. Here we have our muscle. And the space in between is our neuromuscular junction. So let's quickly discuss, we have an action, an excitatory action potential traveling down this terminal axon. What this is going to do is this uh, uh, positive voltage is going to activate voltage-gated calcium channels. So calcium will enter the cell, and that will cause these vesicles that contain acetylcholine to spill out their contents or acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. There, acetylcholine will bind to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and that will activate that receptor. Their ion channels will open, allowing sodium to enter into the muscle cells and there will be propagation of an action potential which will eventually reach the sarcoplasmic reticulum and release calcium into the muscle cell ultimately acting on actin and mycin and causing a contraction. So that is in a normal state. And then here we have, we have acetylcholinesterase that comes in into the cleft and ends up chewing out the acetylcholine receptors, metabolizing them. So I'll label it A-C-H-E. So the medications that we use, the medications that we use, to cause neuromuscular blockade, act on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And they work in one of two ways. We'll talk about in uh, just a broad description of these two neuromuscular blockers. So the first type of neuromuscular block blockers, neuromuscular blocking class, are the depolarizing, depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. And there is one here that we uh, is synonymous with a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker, and that is succinylcholine. And we'll talk about succinylcholine in a later video, but this is just a brief overview of a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So that is one type of our neuro, one out of the two types of our neuromuscular blockers. So what does the depolarizing neuromuscular blocker, to, blocker do? Well, if it's depolarizing, it's gonna act, which is what we expect. It is gonna act at the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and our depolarizing neuromuscular blocker is going to bind to the two alpha receptor sites. And what that's going to do is that is going to stimulate sodium entering into the cell, causing a contraction. But that doesn't make sense because the whole point in administering this medication is to stop the contractions, or relax the muscles, or paralyze the muscles. 
So this is how succinylcholine choline works. It acts as an agonist. It acts as an agonist at the acetylcholine receptor, allowing sodium to enter into the cell. However, the depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent will stay on the receptors and that will eventually cause one of the gates of the sodium channel over a period of time to end up closing. So one of the gates of the sodium channel is time dependent. So if, an, if a sodium channel opens, it'll only open for so long and then it'll close off. And eventually, after that, you will ablate the entrance of sodium into the cell and all that downstream effect and then you will cause relaxation. And that is called a phase one block. Phase one block. We'll talk about phase one blocks and phase two blocks uh, in another video, but this is just to introduce you to the topic. The phase one block is a result of the temporal or time dependent uh, sodium channel gate closing after prolonged, um, uh, after, after depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent uh, binding to its receptor. And the, 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 um, the issue here is that, or the thing here is that the acetylcholine receptor or this motor end plate will not repolarize until the succinylcholine or depolarizing neuromuscular blocker unbinds from its receptor. So after you get an excitatory state, you will get this time-dependent block, and that will cause a phase one block, causing muscle relaxation. The second type of neuromuscular blocking agent, well, we have a depolarizing, and you know it's depolarizing because it depolarizes first, it depolarizes the cell first. So if we have a depolarizing neuromuscular blocking class, then we must have a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking class. Non-depolarizing. And we'll get into the different types in another video, but essentially, let me get my acetylcholine receptor color here. So we have our nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, whereas the depolarizing neuromuscular blocker was an agonist, the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker is going to antagonize this receptor. So essentially, you have this non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker It'll bind to, it just needs to bind to one of the sites, the alpha subunit sites of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor in order to inactivate, inactivate that receptor. So it'll competitively inhibit, it'll competitively inhibit this receptor. So it works by competitive Competitive, it's a competitive antagonist. Oops, antagonist. And th this uh, medication here, non depolarizing drug binding to the receptor, basically nullifies any downstream effects that the receptor causes and leads to, leads to relaxation. So it's not like it depolarizes first, um, relaxation. It's not like the receptors open, allowing an action potential. No, the competitive antagonism of these non-depolarizing uh, neuromuscular blocking agents just bind and inactivate the receptor. And that is how muscle relaxation occurs. So you have one that is an agonist, and it causes relaxation after uh, the time dependent uh, the time dependent gate closes, and we have one that is a a competitive antagonist.
Those are the two types of neuromuscular blocking agents.